the accident with you and Biggie, mm -hmm. where you know y'all got in a car crash. Mm -hmm. Just take me through that entire day and everything that happened and took place with the crash, and you know, just take me through that entire day. Big had a car being serviced, or that was in. The, Big didn't drive; he didn't know how to drive, so he he never drove. Um, Seas was driving. Big had a car that was being serviced or something was wrong with it or something and we were in a you know a loaner car a rental car it was like a van and seas was driving and it was raining we were on um weren't on the turnpike but you know like a, a large highway that was similar to the turnpike in jersey somewhere on our way to the dealership to uh I don't know what we was going to do because we wasn't going to pick up the car. We might have been and maybe I was going to drive it. I don't really remember the whole scenario of, of what, but I know it was raining. Seas was driving. Big was in the passenger seat. And the way that this van was set up, I was sitting like in the middle because it had like the second row was just like one long set of seats. And let's just say Seas wasn't the, <laughs> the best driver. Um, Seas, we we came from uh, we came through a toll and it was like a turn and you know by being wet outside or whatever seas was going too fast and you know instead of slowing down he accelerated and we flipped over the guardrail onto oncoming traffic and then on the side of the road was an embankment with water and everything in it so when the car flipped over the and it went over the embankment it flipped again so i mean you literally it literally is like what people say like when you see your life flash before your eyes it, it it felt like that and i'm sure you know this accident probably only took like a matter of seconds but it felt like it, it went on for like an hour um we flipped all the way over to the side of the embankment where, you know, if, put it like this, if we would have went over, there was a, a guardrail there. If we would have went over the embankment, we would have been in the water, we that'd have been it. We hit the embankment. Um, I think I was out for a minute, I was unconscious. And when I woke up, I didn't know where I was or whatever. I didn't see C's, you know, and I'm looking around and I can see like, you know, the sky and the rain and everything. And I'm like, well, I'm sorry, it wasn't, it had stopped raining at this point. And I'm looking and I'm like, is it raining? Is it raining? And Big is sitting in the passenger seat and he was like, don't move. And I was like, I just kept, I remember I just kept saying something about rain and he kept saying, it's not rain, it's blood. So what happened was when the car flipped like that, sees somehow got thrown from the car. So he wasn't in the car, but he also wasn't in the embankment. C's uh, mouth had hit the um, steering wheel. He lost all his teeth. So he was like running up and down the side of the, you know, on the side of the road, just holding his mouth. And Big was actually stuck in the car. The car had wedged him, um, you know, in between the seat and the glove compartment, he couldn't move. And you know, he was a big guy, so he was just stuck there. I went through the windshield and I was literally on top of the car and I had a serious head injury. I actually have stitches that go from probably like the back of my head all the way here. So it wouldn't have looked, it would have went a little bit further, it would have been my whole face. But it was just blood everywhere. Um, you know, the police came by me having a head injury they considered that the worst injury, so they took me first. And I just remember Big saying, I can't feel my leg. So they had to get the jaws of life to get him out of the car because, again, his size and the fact that he was wedged in like that, he couldn't get out. And um, I honestly don't remember when they took C's. Um, C's. C's didn't have any real, like, you know, like serious bodily injuries, like broken bones or anything, but. I had a concussion, I broke my ankle, uh, crazy stuff with my neck, but Big's leg was shattered. So his whole, you know, he had to get a whole metal ride 
put into his leg. And, you know, again, by him being a big guy, it was just a lot of complications with that. So he wound up being in the hospital the longest out of all of us and also having to rehab and learn how he had to learn how to walk again because, you know, his leg was just messed up. Um, but, yeah, that was that was intense. <laughs> that was a crazy accident. Like, it was wild. But um, so when Big went to Cali, that was really like his first kind of like foray back into, you know, getting around. Because at that point, you know, there were, he was in the hospital for months. So that was like the first time that he was really able to walk um, with a cane. So Cali was kind of like his first trip and he was real excited about it. Cause you know, he had been in rehab for so long to try to get this, you know, the leg back together. And then also with the weight that he had on him, it took longer for him to, you know, rehab the leg and learn how to walk again, so. Who ideal was it for Biggie to go to LA? Um, well, what happened was Life After Death was not supposed to be a double album. It was only supposed to be, you know, a regular album. He was in the hospital so long, that's what he was doing all day. He was writing rhymes. So he wound up literally writing a whole second part of life after death in the hospital, you know, and that's how it wound up becoming a double album. And then the first single off of it was hypnotized and they wanted to shoot it in Cali. So I don't know whose idea it was. I'm, I'm not sure, but you know, that's what they wanted to do. And, you know, big wanted to kind of just show people cause everybody kind of knew about the accident that, you know, you know, he was doing much better and was, was good, even though he still had his cane. So he was, and also they were finishing up the Benjamins record. That's when they were doing the All About the Benjamins record. So that's what he was out there doing. He asked me to fly out there. So I actually was out there up until the day before he died. I actually left the day before. So initially I was supposed to stay and I would have probably been in the car with him when, you know, when he was shot but I wound up leaving the day before. So just take me through that, man, being in LA with Biggie, his last days, his last weeks of him being in LA. How was that experience like? For him? Yeah, like for both of y'all. Cause I heard he was getting death threats in LA, right? I don't remember him getting any death threats in LA. Like Big liked Cali, period. So I remember him saying that he wanted to have a house out there. You know, he was thinking about looking for a crib out there. He just liked, you know, the whole atmosphere of it. So it, I don't ever remember a time when, you know, he was scared to go to Cali or, you know, it was something in the air where he couldn't go to Cali or anything like that. I don't remember anything like that. He always liked Cali, you know what I mean? He liked the environment and, you know, they wanted to shoot hypnotize out there. So the weeks, um, the the time that I was out there before, you know, he died, I mean, he was really in great spirits most of the time. You know what I mean? Like, he was happy to be out there. We got to be real, right? Mm -hmm. Biggie coming to L.A., do you think that was a good idea for him to come out there so soon after Tupac died? You know what? I don't even think that was really on anybody's mind because it's, Pac didn't die in Cali. You know, Pac died in Vegas. And I know, but... You know how Kelly I, loved Tupac and... I don't even think that was really on anybody's mind at that time. Like, I don't think it was, a, you know, in his mind or anybody else's mind that, you know, it might be dangerous for you to go out there. You know what I mean? It's just, this might be, have something to do with you. You know, Pac's death, this could all be affiliated. I don't think that was really on anybody's mind. I just think that you know, Big was excited about Life After Death and just wanted to go to Cali and, you know, shoot this video and come home. Right, and you left a day before Biggie got killed. Why did you leave a day before? <laughs> I actually, well, when I when I first went out there, we, we had a crazy argument uh, a couple of days into my trip and we actually got kicked out of the hotel that we were staying in and it was, pretty wild. So uh, I actually was going to leave before that. And of course, we wound up making up and I wound up staying and then I wound up staying a little longer. I think initially I was only supposed to be out there for a few days, 
and I wound up staying, you know, basically the whole time that they were shooting a video and everything. And um, me leaving the day before um, the awards, I, I think it was just something that I had something to do back in Philly. I can't really remember what it was. It wasn't anything like, you know, we didn't leave on a sour note or anything. But um, I actually had this little job that I had worked in the mall. And, um, you know, when I came back, um, you know, he died the next day. And I remember going to work that following week. And when I got to work, there was this huge bouquet of flowers in there that were from him. And it was so freaky. Like, I was like, what the fuck? Like, they were like, yeah, they've been here for a couple of days. So he had sent this huge bouquet of flowers to my job, like before he died. And they were just there. Like, meanwhile, he, you know, he had already passed away. So that was, that was crazy. Right. So before we get into Biggie Dove, um, you know Gene Deal, right? I, I know who he is and I know that we spoke about him. Um, I don't really remember him like a, like a lot. I know he was Puff Puff's bodyguard, right? Right. The reason why I'm asking you is because he told a story about how you got mad at Biggie and you threw Biggie jewelry out the window. Yeah. That actually happened in Cali. That was the argument that we had. We had a huge fight in Cali. We wrecked the hotel room. And uh, I believe it was a, a crazy, super expensive watch that uh, Puff had bought for Big for Christmas. And some crazy ring that Big had just got. And I threw it off the balcony into the pool. I think he got the watch back. If I'm not mistaken, but the the ring was gone. What was the argument over? Girls actually it was over some pictures that he had of. Uh, let's just say he was uh, he was in some compromising positions and uh, and he had taken some pictures with a um, disposable camera of himself and a girl and uh, <laughs> yeah it was like this so you can kind of figure out what was going on and of course his response was that's not me in the picture I'm like dude <laughs> you're not a little dude and this is a big <laughs> right, right. stomach in this picture and this is girl between your legs that's definitely you in this picture so it was a big crazy argument like super crazy to the point where even after big died and you know they were still looking into um you know what happened, who killed him and all of that. At some point, homicide detectives flew to New York to talk to me about the argument in the hotel to see like, you know, if I had something to do with, with it, which was totally crazy. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? But yeah, they actually came and talked to me about that argument. Right, so take me through the day when Biggie got killed. Just give me your reaction and just take me through that whole day. Of oh, you getting man. that news. I mean, I had only been home, you know, a short amount of time. Like I said, I had just left, you know, um, it was an award ceremony that night that um, that he passed. And um, maybe like around three, four o'clock in the morning, I get a phone call from his best friend, D-Rock. And he was just screaming on the phone. And I'm like, what the hell? Like. I had never heard D-Rock scream or cry or anything. And he's just hysterical. And he's like, you know, they killed them. They killed them. And I'm like, who, what, who killed who, what, what happened? And he was just like, big is dead, big is dead. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, they were big practical jokers. So I kind of thought they were playing like, you know, like a, a real bad practical joke on me, but he was dead serious and he was so hysterical that I could barely make out what he was saying. And he was just like, turn on, turn on the TV. I know it has to be on the news. And sure enough, um, you know, I think at that time the news were, was just reporting like he had been shot. You know, they weren't reporting that he was dead, but Rock, Rock had told me that, you know, he had passed already. So it was devastating. Like, I'm like, I literally just left. Like, are you, this, this isn't, this is a dream. This isn't happening. So it was awful. It was terrible. 